strawberry station on the wall. On the wall. I went ahead and I put in some more lettuces down here. Some more right here. These are ruby leaf and Lola Rosa is one the other one. And they'll be red leaf lettuces. And I need those because I got green ones right now. No red. Add a color. Then out in the living room, grow room, there's uh, part of the plastic I had ripped up because I had to clean the floor underneath. And then we got to lay it back down, lay another uh, piece down, and patch that. It's like patchwork. I have these. 55 gallon blue drums. I've got seven of them around the house that I uh, have watering them. I swap them out twice a year. I don't put any bleach or anything else in there to sterilize the water. I don't feel like that's necessary. I just dump them out, make sure they're relatively clean. No like green mold buildup. It's going to tap in and then allow it to collect rainwater from the downspout and that will be cool I'll have a piece I have the piece right now to hook it up to tap into the downspout and then uh, uh, gotta just build the build the pieces to come in through the through the window gonna figure out how I'm gonna do that and seal it off still and that can catch rainwater for these inside barrels I think that's pretty clever I'm not in a rush to do that just because that's not as high up on my priority list because it's not it, it doesn't seem as necessary right now so it's, it's it's something there to do I still have I have the pieces so that's uh, the important part is is I have it to get to and I got the uh, water storage is essential for my prepping you see these are my Berkey's well, my homemade Berkeys, and they're for me and for the animals and everything. Everything gets rinsed and washed under here, and over here I've got a few more. That's to get all of the toxins off of my dishes and off of you know anything. The food, fruit, you know, fruit. I, I soak in vinegar and scrub it. If I buy it from the stores it gets done that way if, you know organic and even there I'm trying to get away from having to ever buy anything from the store again I want to grow everything and uh, simplify to the point where I can just eat everything I grow consistently repetitively and get back to the that natural cycle but until and while I will be filtering all of my water the animals water bottles right here I have to go out there twice I'll come in and fill them again and go out and the chickens the water feeders one of them right here is a smaller one but I have two that size and I swap those out and then I have another one that is uh, like twice that size that the roosters are down there using right now and I gotta find a place where I'm gonna put these new chicks that are growing right now they're like two and a half three weeks old I wanna guess and they're getting big and I gotta find a better spot for them while I grow out the roosters and I already moved the hens that I had down there so those roosters I'm gonna probably harvest as I as I go is kinda how I'm doing it with my animals I'm just harvesting them as I need them and but with the roosters I may do like four or six coming up soon just to start take just take a real real good chunk out of them and put the meat up so that they're not consuming so much food because they're already pretty big and when this meat is younger and they're not fully grown adult already it's more tender meat and I noticed that with the rabbits too so if the rabbits are still like at their at their latest stage of, of you know um, being juveniles right before they kind of get into that adulthood is right where that I don't know the, the exact dates because I did just, just never did it I'm just going off the feel of it 
I never looked it up specifically yet. But maybe I will so I can really know these dates. But as the, as it feels, it's uh, the more tender, more tender meat that way. And I, I like that. That's better for meals. So I'm just harvesting as we go. And that's how I'm finding the right and the sweet spot to keep just as enough animals to keep just to keep me fed and maybe have a little extra I'm cleaning the floor here it got um, a little green underneath some water got through I had to cut the plastic I'm gonna clean it I'm pretty much almost done and then I'm gonna zip it back up tape the seams and I'm gonna even throw another layer of plastic down um, I want to do like the palm liner is what I'm gonna probably do but until I get that it's like a black pond liner and I'm gonna do that across the whole floor um, coming up and you know in the next two to three to four months or so but I'm gonna just seal this back up and then throw another thin layer of plastic over top for now and then be more careful with how I'm spraying the hose <laughs> so I just aim for the pots primarily that's gonna be my focus I gotta settle down a little bit so I'm gonna get that done and then here are my beautiful strawberries that I'm just so proud of but they no flowers yet um, really soon I'm thinking hmm I'm cleaning too I'm doing uh, uh, some cosmetic work so I want the walls a little nicer and uh, I'm gonna finish putting some plastic up in a few spots check this out this is uh, my peak so I or, you know so I can see out there but then it goes ahead and closes up like that everything's plastic sealed I got my stopper in the door so nobody can kick it in camera I'm gonna fix this spot on the wall up here I'm gonna uh, paint this section these in these uh, doorways and then down here in the trim and stuff through here to get it a little nicer and then in here I got a little patchwork I got to do up in the corner and then I'm going to paint this area too. And in here I'm going to move some plants right now from in here all over into here because I'm getting in here I'm doing like a deep clean of the whole house and getting things straightened up really really good so that it's a lot nicer to work with and I'm going to move this stuff over here temporarily I'm just going to jam it and cram it all in there. We'll get that room empty for now so I can work in there. Get these fans down. Uh, this one too. I mean, they're just junk. So I'm just going to go up there and disconnect it all. And uh, keep the things tighten them up. I'm going to put probably a better strip of Gorilla Tape on the seams here. Where it's missing, where the this hits the wall. And then at some point I'm going to paint the wall. But I'll just paint that right beside the, the tape line and make it look real custom. Because the tape's going to have to stay and I'll just layer it on as I go. Because so I'll probably put even another piece of plastic over this window at some point. Straighten this line up. Just little things that are cool for cosmetics as I'm going here now. Because I'm pretty much wrapped up with all three rooms. Now I just got to you know tighten them up and make them cooler looking and cleaner looking um the big rush you know i avoided cosmetic thing features around the house like fixing little things painting and paintwork because i was in a rush i still am to get everything set up and now that i'm pretty much set up as far as the animals and the food growing rooms and having the preps on deck and things like that now i can kind of relax a little bit and focus on getting things looking really nice cosmetically. Riza Magadonian pepper and the strawberries is one thing that makes me really excited um, once all these start to flower and I can pollinate them and get some berries that's gonna be really really sweet I got these kales as they've been growing well you know I, I pick I've learned it is what you want to do is pick the lowest branch next as you go to harvest and eat and you can keep them somewhat short by keeping just a, a couple two or three or four shoots growing I guess or leaves growing out from the center then everything else you can trim away and eat and harvest as you go 
and that's the general idea and then you'll notice on the stalks as they grow older and bigger and live you know and as they're going age and you eat and harvest they make their little notches from every every branch or every leaf you pulled and they form their own solid hard stalk it's really cool like you see there's not much left there in that one but but it's got a lot of uh, history to it it's like the tr tree rings <laughs> in a way and I just I'm always eating off these you can see here on the lettuce so this is my green lettuce it is uh, marvels of four seasons lettuce and there's four of them there in that pot uh, the couple are a little shorter but I've been fed a lot of these little baby chicks you can see each one that got pulled off as it went and then it grows itself taller another pepper here this one might be a, a store-bought and I since I trimmed up all the peppers they they stopped producing real quick um, there's not many peppers out here right now but the trees still seem somewhat healthy I've had uh, sometimes some time ago where it seemed like it dried out just a little too much on this one and a couple of the pepper plants look a little more shriveled on some leaves where it might have got a little too cold in here that may be another thing that could have happened there because there was a few days where it did get pretty pretty cold I know they can be cold sensitive but they still seem to be growing okay I think they're gonna come up with more peppers they're just kind of in like a dormant mode that's what I'm hoping anyway because I did just recently see you see what I'm saying here like you'll see this leaf is kind of shrivelly like it's stunted but you go ahead and look over here and you see my habanero tree and look how beautiful that thing is I use that every day for egg, um, well when I make eggs and uh, wrap it and stir that up I, I chop all that up and make that a political plate of it put like bean soup and other grains and rices and lentils and things over top of it all and it's just one big meal and that I eat regularly and I use these bad boys in there and I got an abundance of them they're so good they got just the right kick um, the uh, name of them is I don't know because of the abbreviated tag I'd have to relook but it's CRHHP so habanero pepper of some kind I'm not gonna write that like that I'm just gonna take the time and go ahead and write them out from now on when it's like a new thing that I, I really don't know what it is so that way I don't get confused with the abbreviations but I try to go ahead and, and companion plant and that's another thing a big thing I'm doing with like the strawberries around everything and everywhere that can see over here under my avocado tree so this avocado tree is doing okay it's had some time where before where you know the leaves got a little rough and I'm I don't know if that was just maybe some cold or I let it dry out too much but now it's got new shoots that are really looking really good coming up now so I'm optimistic and hopeful for it and I've got you know a few of these avocado trees that's one two there's a third one back here and then I thought there was another one maybe there isn't maybe it was just three yeah it is just three I gave one to a friend so we'll see how that goes and if I you know hold on to those and they make it through the years maybe one day when they flower in a few years or something I can know how to do the type A type B because uh, that's something about avocado trees you got to have them both for some kind of pollination effort which I gotta have to learn but I'm not in a hurry to learn it I'm just letting them grow and I'm gonna companion plant around them so that it utilizes all the space still just like that with the strawberries so it's not just an avocado tree and you know who knows if the avocado tree ends up making it it was that all that time and space and dirt and soil wasted for nothing no because it's gonna be companion planted with the berries so there's gonna be a purpose there even if the tree goes bad and then I lug my berry towers, my strawberry towers, more pepper plants. So they're forming new little, well, new little flowers, I guess, or, or buds in there, which are looking pretty hot. Try to get the zoom to focus, or just focus to focus. 
So yeah, and then over here, there's greens. So I got basils back there in that one. And then rutabagas and turnips down in there. Now I'm not really too concerned about the roots. I'm really just in it for the greens and that's uh, really cool. So I got those and I'm eating those and we're all eating those. Me and the, the animals and the bugs. And then there's an aloe vera down there and more strawberries. Companion planted next to it. Figured why not? I had extra and there was a spot there. There's some stuff in here. This is some kale, some dazzling blues. And um, yeah, I, I usually keep them harvested down to, you know, just a few leaves. I'd even pick this one away probably tonight. And they just continue to grow and they, they grow stronger with stronger stalks as they grow. And more peppers, kale. Uh, this is greens, mustards, tender greens. And a red Russian kale. So there's a couple of those in there. One right there, kale, and another kale here. And that's the mustard greens. And then a big aloe vera, mama vera, and, and her you know companions, more strawberries. And I staked it to kind of pull it a little because it was leaning. But it sends off offshoots from under the dirt, a lot like strawberries even do, where there's, a, there's one right back there you see down there right there that's that's a baby aloe coming in from under the dirt you know it's uh that's how it seeds itself and then next door these are our bok choys yeah tatsoi tatsoi bok choy that's what these are beets now in here in this tub it's got all these leafy greens i'm not too concerned about roots so I'm more in it for the green tops and that's what I got here and it's growing very well now here next door these are dwarf Siberian kales is what these are here and then these ones here are the same this is a pepper plant I got all these pepper plants in here and uh, Murasaki purple that's what this one is um, they're growing okay. They're they're kind of slow production because it's a little cooler in my house So that might be it. I'm thinking but they're still growing and here is some rutabagas and These greens I'm in it for the greens not the roots So I just put these lettuces in right here. So these are new seeds that are sprouting in and then uh, uh, over here is Kamatsuna old Tokyo that's a green that I eat all this stuff regularly I'm always in here eating it every day well every other day I should say is what it really ends up being uh, this is lemon basil and it's uh, growing really good it's starting to flower actually you notice there so I've been eating just a little bit of that but I'll probably go ahead and harvest a, a lot of that and feed it to my rabbits tonight as a treat there's some more kale red russian that's what this one is here there's a few of them i try to get as many in each pot as i can these are just fabric pots you know like five gallon ones i roll them down roll them in half so that it makes them more shallow and up here is uh aloe vera so it was outside uh and got a little frost before i brought it in and it got its fingertips frozen and i had to cut them off but it's still doing good and it's still sending up baby shoots you see there and it's companion planted with strawberries. Here is an aloe vera. This is one that came up as a shoot originally and then I moved it and transitioned it here and it's doing really good now. Back over here is, looks like, what are these? Kales, yeah. Yeah, kale dazzling blue and then uh, scarlet. That's what this one is here, scarlet. And then there's a piece of grass and over here is a bunch of different companions different things that were left over from when i planted out the original tray and i just put them all in one pot uh that's salsify i believe that's what this stringy stuff is i actually haven't tried it yet i'm gonna go ahead and, and try that uh it'd probably be good and then over here is swiss chards witty down in here is more swiss chard these ones are beyond Bian... biana 
D lion. And then over here is Tat Soy Bok Choy. There's four or five of them. One little one in the middle. I'm trying to keep them going and growing by pruning the outer leaves of the bigger guys around them. And uh, over here is just some leftover cannabis trimmings. And here and here is more lettuces. And oh, down here is smooth German kale. These are new that I just got put in here the other day from up here where my seed tray is where I got other things some Swiss chards that popped up and more lettuces down in there and then I got these beans I want to get them onto something this one's starting to get stringy so I'm gonna go ahead and get them on something probably my trellis I'll go ahead and bring that in and set that up and that'll be really cool so there's a few bush and a few pole and we'll see how that goes on there should be good and maybe I'll even start a few more for another rotation before spring and down in here is just some old pepper plants I'm going to recycle these probably just toss them because they're stunted and then aloe veras so a couple more aloe veras I'm going to have a ton of those the way that these aloe plants send off their shoots um, I could probably just continuously make those forever and ever down here is my chicks they are growing out and they're going to need to go somewhere else real soon uh, this is their heat lamp. It is uh, ceramic, so there's no light when the lights go out. They're on a timer here for the aviary when the lights go out. That's it, everyone. It's, it's bedtime. So then, uh, back there's the feed the feeder. That there's the waterer. Nesting boxes for hens. Uh, these are just grow outs, and that's the idea with the roosters and the baby roosters is grow outs. And then over here, this is food redundancy. This is uh, this is him, this is Thumper, my original boy. And then down back in there is Snow. So she's my original girl, the Silver Fox. And there's their hide. I built this in the corner. Uh, the laundry room down here, it's, which is now my grow room. It's completely transitioned and always expanded. I got this paint for my walls. It's an organic based, all plant based. And it's actually got some detoxification properties to it. I found this online. There's a seller on Amazon. It's not cheap. It's uh, right over 100 bucks for a gallon. But it's not toxic. It's actually the opposite from what it all says there. Um, antibacterial, antifungal, regulate humidity, regulate temperature, mental stability, herb aroma. What else does it say? Release infrared, deodorize, product name, VOC free, formaldehyde free, toluene free, radon free, non toxic, non chemical. It's made of premium natural clay and herb powder paint. I thought that was pretty sweet. I'm using this one. This is called Jade. It's like a white. I'm using this one for my trim and sections of the wall right now. And then I'm going to buy another one. There's like seven or eight different types and they all got their own thing. There's one that's anti-inflammatory. There's one that's like made for mood. And it's really, really cool. Because you, you go into the store and you see the gallons in the uh, aisle at Home Depot or whatever. And that's all toxic. As far as I'm concerned, toxic garbage. And then that stuff, it off gases. For, for like years after you paint a place with those toxic things and then you're breathing and living in that environment is completely toxic and goes against the very nature of everything <laughs> that I'm working to do here and uh, likely you're working to do too. Get the herb soil paint. That's, um, that's the thing that I'm going to be laying down on sections of the house like up there where it's a little torn up in the hallways and everywhere the trim a lot of places so I may be spending a couple two or three hundred more bucks just to paint but that's well worth it because the uh, the cosmetics it's time over here is a fan well it's it's a, a filter it's a carbon filter that is made for grow tents so you would hook it up if you're growing in a tent and but I use it out here as like a living room filter it just filters really good I got to clean this off and it keeps the air clean up here so it's it's a living thing 
It's like a heartbeat. I've been organizing. So downstairs, check this out. I got this room where I keep my seeds. And I have moved a lot of my prep buckets down here. So you'll see when I open this door here. Let me shine the light. But I got a grow tent in there. And there's some bags. Let me turn this light on. See now, in this grow tent is where I got my seed potato. Is all up in there. But what I got out down here now is all of my food preps. Like uh, some main food preps that I put away. Beans and rice and flowers. And other buckets. Cash buckets. And some bean soup mix. But then I got all this chicken feed. There's a bunch of it here. And then a, a section of, of rabbit food here. And these are stored up in mylar bags, vacuum sealed. Five gallons should be good for 20 plus years. And I got more that I'm going to move probably from upstairs down here. And just cram this up in full and have it just packed. So I got oils and garlics, water filters. You know, I got a ton of these. I got uh, flour. A lot of flour in here, coconut oils, but the olive oils is really good. Um, big old bags of seeds, 